not going to get that championship back by shaking hands, being best friends with the champion. No, I slapped him right in the stupid face. I slid out of the ring, and I let him know my intentions from that point. Uh, he calls me down to the, the ringside, and we're, we're starting to chat. He's just saying how I'm doing, all that. I'm just, and then at the very end, he's like, hey, you got a match. I was like, I'm sorry, what? He's like, yeah, you're going to have a match. I was like, that's not normal. Like, why? Why? And he's like, yeah. Um, we're gonna we're, you'll be fine you're, you're gonna do good you're gonna wrestle Aleister Black it's gonna be it's gonna be great I was like all right cool yeah and now your hosts of the card subject to change podcast for frequency sake tag team champions of the world the wizard CZ and never wrong Nick Bull. Another jam-packed edition of the Card Subject to Change podcast, the podcast by the fan for the fan. We are powered by Low Pies Pizza, built by Durham Remodeling, colored by Ryan Allison Tattoo, and protected by Jared Zuki of Country Financial. And I say jam-packed because Zook, Zook, my bad, Zook. Nah, we knew we'd mess it up. Sorry. Yep. First one's on us. First one's on us. We got a jam-packed <laughs> edition here of the Card Subject to Change podcast. We are talking, of course, everything WrestleMania leading up to the biggest event of the year. I am your host, Never Wrong, Nick Bull. Joining me is my co-host, co-tag team champion of the For Frequency Sake Network, the Wizard CZ. Wiz, how you doing? I'm feeling good. I'm excited. We got a, we got a full house here with some experts to talk WrestleMania. We got a full house, and I'd be remiss if I wasn't a good guest and introduced everybody to each other. The host of the Fast Money Podcast, he's joining us for the first time on the show. That can be found on the For Frequency Sake Network. That is Rod Villa Gomez. Rod, I hope it's okay if we call you RVG. Is that okay? R V G. R V G. Let's do it. Yes. I'm all right with that. I'll, I'll take that moniker. All right. Welcome to the show, Rod. We're glad to have you. Of course, returning guests from the Educative Ignorance Podcast, the podcast also found on the For Frequency Sake Network. Joe, the show Winkle. Joe, how you doing? What is up, boys? You know, RVG is one thing, but I am the whole fucking show. So we're here to hang out. <laughs> we're here to party. You're uh, here to finish your story, it looks like. You're not exactly, the only one. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> I don't know where my book is. Oh, here we go. I'm here to finish my story, and I even brought my book to do some light reading. And if you could tell us, <laughs> a book of crossword puzzles. So we're here to have a good time and talk some graps, gentlemen. Also joining us, a friend of the show, returning uh, guest on the show. He is the host of the MLW Confusion podcast. You can also find him at any local indie show, and he's great to strike up a conversation with. Please welcome back to the show, Rob Kammerer. Hey, guys. How are we doing? We ready? We doing? Get some, getting the graphs ready? I can't wait. I can't <laughs> wait to pick y'all's brains on this big show. And, of course, if you tuned into last week's episode, our latest one, we talked everything independent wrestling for WrestleMania weekend, but back to join us for this guest panel, this celebrity panel, if you will, the SC, the voice of SCW play-by-play, -play, the one, the only Tim Regal. Regal, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. It is Mania weekend. We've already kicked it off. I was just uh, watching some of the Russell John show right before I jumped on here. Uh, typical of Mania weekend, it was uh, in a giant one of those event tents, and apparently. The weather right now in Philadelphia is freezing and absolutely poor. It's basically what we had yesterday. It is freezing <laughs> and pouring bad rain. So it was a uh, experience. Uh, Mike Bailey came to the ring in a giant winter coat. Uh, <laughs> uh, so uh, but no but, yeah, boots, right? He still weekend. he still had bare feet, right? Yeah, still had the bare feet. Uh, uh, yeah, maybe a weekend is maybe a weekend is in full swing already. Keeping it kayfabe, speedball Mike Bailey, but had the winter jacket on. Let's hope the weather is nice for me. It is outdoors at Lincoln Financial Stadium. And I'm going to go ahead and kick it off with our newest guest, RVG, Rod Villa Gomez. Rod, have you been, are you satisfied with the buildup of Mania and have they done a good job of really getting you interested for this show? I have not. I don't know that I've seen more violent buildup to WrestleMania. I mean, I've seen some pretty violent builds, but this is like these guys are out for blood. This is actually making me think that it's personal, even though we know it's not. I mean, uh, but if I were just an outsider looking in, I'd be like, are we sure this is fake? Because there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of hate going around. And 
honestly, I don't know how you can go back in the locker room after you just beat the hell out of somebody and be like, man, that was so awesome. Good job, buddy. Good job. Because for me, man, my blood would still be pumping. Like, I don't know that Cody Rhodes and The Rock probably talked after that uh, that bus incident out there. But yeah, I don't I don't know that you can shake hands after that. I'll be like, dude, you got me really good in that one because I'm getting tossed around like a rag doll. Whether it's that bus incident or how Raw ended the other night with the weight belt, I mean, my goodness, you uh, had to be pretty good friends if you're uh, letting somebody whack you on the back like that, man. That that was pretty violent way to end Raw, and I like how you stated this has been a very violent build for Raw. It all centers around that, that tag team match on night one with Seth Rollins and Cody Rhodes taking on The Rock and Roman Reigns. And, and Joe, grade The Rock's run right now since he's come back. How has his run been? Uh, and this time back is, is is the final boss, the heel rock that we all love. I'm glad you mentioned him because I had a one-liner ready for that. If I had to give him a letter grade, I would give him a U for as in uh, he the rock since, since coming back and officially turning heel and putting on the sunglasses and the Versace vest. He has been uh, like a sliding glass door, which is unhinged. So there's where the U is. Um, no, the... I, we talked about this uh, when Cody stepped out of the way and let The Rock enter the back door. You, The three of us, me, Nick, and uh, CZ, mm-hmm. terrible, grammar, or, uh, terrible grammar there, but regardless, we talked about in our little text chat about how we all thought that was just a really bad idea. It makes everyone look bad. And then lo and behold, either they were smart enough or they got – very lucky enough to realize that everyone hated it and they pivoted in such a beautiful way. And the rock is like bought in and he's bumping like crazy when getting slammed off an announce table on Monday. And the rock is a maniac and it's amazing. I can't believe that I was so down as I was. I think we all were like six, eight, six to eight weeks ago. And now we're four days, three days away from, from everything happening and as excited as ever uh well it's pretty crazy to me, think we're how far we've come in such a short time yeah for sure let me throw this out to the room was was it was it a pivot on wwe's part or did triple paul know what he was doing when he had the rock whisper in cody's ear did he know ahead of time the reaction that was going to get and where the story was actually going to go i think this was all by design I think they knew from day one. I think The Rock knew. Now, there are going to be people that are always going to think it was a pivot. I think they knew they could create a Daniel Bryan-type grassroots swell for Cody by going this route. I think with it, but when they got to the media event, I think they knew. I think this was the plan from all the whole time. Rob, I got a question for you. Since you were with us the night of Rumble for our 100th episode watch party, Punk gets injured that night, and everybody's plans are kind of up in the air. Nobody knows what's going to happen at Mania. Do you think WWE has made the right moves, or do you think they could have done anything better to to book these two nights uh, as they've booked them? Uh, like this, like this is me being totally armchair about things because I I, sure. I will out I will out myself early in this is that I haven't been an I haven't been an avid watcher of the WWE uh, since pre pandemic um so like i'm getting i i I did some studying up to catch up on where we're going so i could be on here tonight um but like i think overall like they've done a good build for it though i'm not gonna lie like i i think especially with the rock being a part timer i think the rock would almost be better served to help elevate someone almost like an la knight or some or someone that's just like on the cusp of like you know being great uh that being said i totally understand why you would throw him in with the bloodline and and the coat and cody and all that sort of good stuff as well uh just because he is uh, you know arguably like one of the biggest stars wwe has ever had so you want to attach it to what's going to be the marquee matchup for wrestlemania as of itself but i just like to see him give the rub to someone else that being said of course i am thoroughly invested to see where this is going to go just in general and what role rock is going to be playing going forward with some of the rumors that him and Cody will have a match via SummerSlam and just seeing, you know, are we actually going to finish the story this weekend? Is it finally going to happen or is there going to be, you know, more members of the bloodline popping up or is the rock just going to be salty and come in and 
whoops some ass night two as well. I, <laughs> I'll I, say this <laughs> just for viewers, since we have a bunch of people watching, if it, I'm going to say it now just to get it out of the way. If the story isn't finished on Sunday night, I think I'm going to have Nick Bull give me the Val Venus treatment in his garage, and we're going to go Whoa. choppy choppy on live stream or something. <laughs> Whoa. I'm just gonna, I'm, I might Whoa. lose my mind. Whoa. I, wow, I need that cool. that's, that's, like, hold that thought right there. Rot, uh, RVG, what if Cody doesn't finish the story? Then what? So it's funny from a gambling perspective, if you look, all of these guys, all the challenges are all favorites, like all of the, they're all the favorites to win these, these ratches. And so I don't know if the books know something or what, but if, if Cody does not finish this story, I, I don't know where you go because you've built this thing up all the way to the fact where he's got to finish this story. Right. And, and honestly, I, I think it's bloodline rules. I think it's bloodline rules going into Saturday because I think they, the only way that you can let Cody finish the story is finish it all the way, especially since you put Rocket in the mix. They have this the the, the don't they don't show gun unless you're going to use gun thing. Don't don't introduce bloodline rules unless you're going to use bloodline rules the next day, right? You can't That's a good point. angle that carrot out there and say, oh, you know, we're going to do this and then let Seth and, and Cody win and then you know break the rules the next day. So I think the the way this has to play out. And of course, I don't write for them, and I don't know anything about it other than <laughs> the one that, is it's got to play out that that they lose on Saturday, they get their asses kicked on Saturday, uh, bloodline rules on Sunday, and then the whole roster. And this is the biggest WrestleMania of them all, right? It's going to be a shit so, show. <laughs> yeah, you're going to have everybody and their grandmother. You may even have resurrected WWE superstars come out to try to help Cody Rhodes finish his story, but. This is going to get uh, the fans are going to come down and help him finish the story, right? This is yes. going to be a, a, a big event on Sunday, so they got to close it out the, the only way they can and with everybody involved. That's you, a great you, point. And you've got to think if, they're going to finish the story. If not, Philly, they're in Philly, one of the harshest sports towns. I mean, these people boo, these people cheer players when they get hurt, they boo Santa Claus. You've got to think they're going to riot in the aisles, in the streets, if Cody doesn't finish the story, right, and that's what And that's why, like, right, right, right. Up, but, like, that's why I, I'm psy kind of psyched if Cody doesn't win. I kind of want to see the chaos that ensues. Right, right. And I, <laughs> I'm, here too. I'm here, too, if he doesn't win. Like, the internet will melt. The IWC will melt as we know so, it. And maybe that's maybe that's a good thing. <laughs> my daughters won't, probably won't stop crying, so I don't know what to do after that. <laughs> Uh, I don't want to be the people that are low pies pizza with me if Cody doesn't win. Um, oh. um, but guys, I called it on the Royal Rumble post show that Cody was finishing the story. All before this rock stuff happened, all before the bloodline, everything else, I said Cody was going to finish the story. Sunday is going to be a day for a day for finishing stories, that's because before Cody finishes the story, right here. Iowa Hawkeyes number 22 and Caitlin Clark, they're going to finish the story. Then Cody's going to finish the story. And yes, they you said it. It's going to be, there's going to be people coming out to help. There's going to be Jay Uso. There's going to be um, God knows who else. And I saw this theory thrown out online, and I'm going to throw it out here, that it's going to come down to, as guys are going out, it's going to get left to the rock as the last guy to get taken out and who's going to come to take out the rock the final boss right there's another final boss baby that glass is going to shatter oh. that hole oh. is going to roll down to the ring stone cold is going to come in he's going to help cody by opening up a can of whoop ass on the rock oh my God. takes out the rock cody wins one two three everybody goes bananas if that glass shatters, I won't be ashamed. There will be happy man tears streaming down my face. Just the goosebumps will be bumped out. I'll hold my arm out like the rock so you can see my goosebumps. <laughs> and I'll have happy man tears coming down my face if that glass shatters. Oh, my goodness. Vince Russo will be rolling over in his grave for how overbooked Sunday night is going to be, but it makes <laughs> sense. So here's the thing. I So I thought here's how I thought the tag match was going to go, and I thought of it kind of today. Initially, I thought, all right, who who needs to how, how do you navigate where three of the four guys in this match on, on Saturday night are in your two biggest matches the next day and the other one is The Rock. 
Who eats the pin and how does it happen? Now, you guys know I always talk about how don't have the match if nobody can lose, right? Because it's just dumb to not have the finish, which they're obviously not going to do something like that. I initially thought, okay, maybe Seth Rollins pins Roman or something because Seth has kind of been buried in a sense this entire time. He's always made out to look like pretty much the lowest on the totem pole, so it'd be neat for him to get the moment. But Rod did just make a great point. They're not going to tease the bloodline rules thing and then not have it happen. So I'm a moron for thinking that Cody or Seth had a chance on Saturday. Yes, you're right. The Rock and Roman are winning on Saturday, which is fine because then it just builds up. But now the question is, does Cody eat the pin? Probably, right? Rock pins Cody Saturday night, right? That's got that's got to yeah. be what happens. I think that's the next chapter in this whole thing. I think if Rock pins Cody and Cody then goes on to finish his story, he can dangle that carrot over Cody, and then you got SummerSlam on the horizon. Maybe you have Mania next year. But I think Cody has to eat the pin uh, just, just because of, of the rock and, and, and the significance of him pinning and, and, and what they can make looming out of that. You know, he could just be over it, Cody's shoulder for yeah. the next year. You know, and hey, he's the only I, I'm sorry, I was well, going to say, he's no, the go only ahead, one go ahead. Afford, he's the only one that can afford it, too. Not that the rock can't afford to, to, to eat a loss, but. You don't want Seth to take the pin because, spoiler alert, Seth is losing Sunday. Like, if he wins, I would be pretty stunned. He shouldn't win Sunday. Uh, you don't want to have – you could have – I know the original thought was Seth pinning Roman. I've always liked the idea of Roman when he loses. He loses it all. So, Because I, I think there is a neat story, and I've told you guys all this all the time. I think there's a really cool story in the downfall of Roman Reigns, this version of the character, like losing everything. So, like, like you know, if he lost on both nights, then when they do the Rock match, he actually loses to the Rock with the belt not on the line. And then you, like, rebuild him in that way. Um, but you're right. It probably will be Cody because he can afford it. Why? Because 24 hours later, he's going to end the longest reigning championship run since, like, uh, you know, Moses parted the Red Sea or whatever. whatever. <laughs> Rob, let, let's just assume that that – Rock and Roman win on Saturday night. How are you booking that ending? How do you, how do you see fit that ending on going on night one? Yeah, I I, I agree with Joe that you know it should be Cody taking uh, taking the fall, especially if he's going to win night two, because again that adds that extra layer of the story of like of making Cody the underdog, and like I also fully agree that the Rock should be the one doing the the pinfall as well, because this can also, this can branch out in several different directions as well. Just dangling that over Cody's head. Like it can also tease some dissension, like within the bloodline, if that's the direction they want to go after Roman loses the title, because like you can have, you could have like rock basically play gl glory hog to the situation or in a weird way, spear people's elbow. And you could just try to argue that Roman did all the work and rock just come in straight from Hollywood and got the pinfall on that sure. leading to some, you know, some strife in the, in the future as well. So I think there's a lot more creative options for the rock to be the one to get the pinfall over Cody. Um, especially cause you know, you don't want, you don't want uh, like really though, like in terms of how characters work, like Seth would be a great person to be pinned just because like he can do anything and he'll bounce back. Like he, he's, he's just that versatile. However, I also do think he's going to lose to Drew McIntyre uh, because Drew's been, killing it as of late as well but yeah I, I and then when it comes to night two like overbooked mess uh but cody will stand tall uh whether they got austin or not that that can be that, that remains to be seen but that, as you put it like that would goosebumps and everything for me in, in my old jaded heart sunday's gonna be so disgusting because of how overbooked it's gonna be but we won't care no <laughs> honestly like at this moment it's the only time we're looking forward to out of all of Roman's defenses. This is like the only match we want to be an absolute cluster. Yes. 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 Because yeah. why I not? Over by the end of by the time it's it's even there. I mean, I may have overloaded before the match even starts. So we'll see how that goes. Now I so, think if yeah, you look, I, mean, I think if you look at the two nights, night one is probably the better booked of the two when you look at the whole matches. Yeah. And I know CZ and I have talked about this off air. How much will the Jay and Jimmy match figure into the booking of how the main event goes? Um, do, does Jay 
or does does Jimmy get that win so it's pro bloodline early on and you know kind of sending a message early in the night or is Jay tip over the apple cart and and, and get the win and you know g- give the bruise to the bloodline first thing drawing first blood I think Jimmy gets the win because Jay is clearly I, Jay is clearly the more pushed guy yes. I think Jimmy gets the win possibly with some help from Solo um to help a get the bloodline off going and then b when Jay comes out and takes Jimmy out, that is the redemption for avenging the loss that he took on night one. Oh, yeah. And this this feud is just beginning, in my opinion, this Jay and Jimmy feud. This is the first of what we're going to see a series of matches in. And with with Solo interfering to give Jimmy the win, that sets up to Jay to do the same thing that... Uh, that Roman's done and Jay saying, or to do, to accuse Jimmy of doing the same thing Roman's done where he can't win on his own. So that's going to set up another match. And maybe Jay comes out of that second match smelling like roses with the win. That only sets up a third match to determine who the ultimate brother is in that scenario. That's just my opinion. I think, I think Jimmy has to come out of this one winning. Are you saying they're going to have a third and final match? To find out who is the most oos. <laughs> we gotta figure this yeah. out, Oos. We gotta figure It'll this be, out. Yeet and no yeet will be on the line. <laughs> the, yeah. the, loser, the loser can never use their catchphrase again. <laughs> we're gonna have a we're gonna have a Paul Heyman on a forklift match or something. <laughs> find out in Philly. Paul Heyman on a- <laughs> Shut up and take my money. <laughs> Turn it a big football. <laughs> the lo- retirement match. The loser has to get their Samoan chest tattoo removed. Removed. Oh no! <laughs> I'm sorry. He opened the door. We've got we've got the wild tag match that we've talked about uh, on night one. We've also got Jimmy and Jay. What else? When you look at that night one card speaks to you rvg as like i'm i gotta see this match what, what's 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 poking out to you on that night one card that really catches your attention so to be perfectly honest with you i i didn't have a memorized so read off a couple of those matches because I, i'm gonna have to go over them well, They're, that's it also blur to me anyway <laughs> but i know that i'm looking forward to uh to the bailey and uh, io sky match that's for sure i'm yes. not sure if that's night one or if that's night that two. is night two uh, match one or night one reads like this. You've got Jimmy and Jay kicking things off, at least at the top of the list that I have here. Uh, Rey Mysterio and Dragon Lee versus Dom and Santos. Damage control against Bianca, Naomi, and Jade. Uh, Rhea Ripley versus Becky. You can stop Gunther right versus San- Okay. That's that's the one right there. That is the one that I, I am all about. I didn't know if that was night one or night two, but... I tell you right now, I've become a fan of the man. I, I didn't know why I didn't necessarily uh, like her all that much until I started really, really paying attention to this this run up to Mania. But she has just gone. I mean, to me, like she's built the best resume heading into this as far as uh, the championship in the women's division uh, to take on Rhea. And I mean, Rhea Ripley, she's fine as a character and all, but for whatever reason, I just feel like the crowd is way more behind the man than they are the mommy. So um, I'm going to be very interested to see how this one plays out, especially because, you know, with, with Rhea Ripley, the, the crowd loves her and they get behind her, but it just, it feels like when, when Becky comes out, the crowd just is electrified. Plus she's got her book, right? She's touting her book. They all, everybody knows Rollins is probably going to lose. So, you know, somebody in that family has got to win. So, you know, it's just, <laughs> yeah, I think everything's pointing to Becky uh, in this one. I'm really looking forward to this one play out. Cause I think, both of them are, are fantastic wrestlers in, in, in their own right. And I want to see how they play off of each other because we haven't seen that happen yet up until, you know, this this run right now. So uh, I want to see how they play off of each other and if this is going to be a really good match. And I want to, I want to po- I'll pose this to you, Regal. Who in that match needs the win more in your opinion? I mean, I know where I stand. I, I kind of disagree with Rod, no offense. Uh, but I think that, I think that Rhea is going to come away and give Becky a chance to maybe go on a couple book tours, promote her book a little bit and spend some time maybe with Seth who might also, after he loses to drew be disappearing for a month or two. Uh, but Regal, who, who do you feel needs this win more uh, for the women's world title? So these two are the two most 
over most popular women's wrestlers possibly in history. They are the 1A and 1B. Rhea's rise to me has been absolutely meteoric to watch her go from, you know, NXT UK to NXT and now become a phenomenon. I mean, the mommy, everything. I mean, everything from people mimicking her to the obvious social media, um, you know, uh, let's just say there was that clip uh, a few weeks ago, a couple, about two weeks ago, was it two weekends ago? Uh, I could not go through my Twitter feed with about every three tweets being uh, that video. Uh, and if you know, you know. Are you referencing um, the Rhea stink face video? Yes, that would be the one. Um, <laughs> uh, I've seen it a couple times. <laughs> but CZ, CZ, like you said, I think I think Becky's going on a book tour. Um I think they're the, the the Rollins family, as you will, uh, might be taking a little bit of time just to chill for a bit, and I think it just further cements Rhea's you know media rise that she pins the man. So I think uh, Rhea retains here. Rob, what are your thoughts on this women's mega matchup? I mean, I I hope this opens the show. Uh, on night one. I think the crowd would just eat up both intros. The crowd's going to be lathered up, ready for ready for a fight. These two want to fight. Where do you see this match going, Rob, between Rhea and uh, the man? Uh, I mean, low-key, this this has potential to be the match of the night. I, think, I definitely think both women will show out, and at least in terms of in-ring performance, not counting drama and all that stuff, like, I think it might actually have the potential to outshine the tag team main event. Uh, that being said, as much as I would love Becky to be victorious on this, uh, I kind of agree with the group so far as that I think Becky's going to take some time off after this to well do the book tour uh, amongst other things. And so as much as I would like Rhea's reign to end at WrestleMania, just because I think there's just been too many super long title reigns in the WWE at the moment. And I, and you know, I don't know how many of them are actually going to end by it. Like we're, we're implying they're all going to end with it, like almost. But, you know, I guess someone's got to retain the title and it's pro out of all of the big title matches that have, uh, that feature the title reigns that have been, you know, over a year and whatnot. Uh, Rhea is probably the one that's in the most dan uh, danger overall, but I think she, uh, but I think she, uh, she retains. Yeah, I think, I think she's going to retain. Um, I, I remember Rod saying earlier that, you know, all the champs or the challengers, I believe he's, I think he said were favored. I think if there's one that's going to happen, it's going to be this. Um, I know. And, and Rob may, said it perfectly that, <laughs> and, and it go, it coalesces in a tweet that I saw like about a week ago where it was like Romans, Roman reigns is 2 billion day title reign has made every wrestling fan think that all these title reigns need to have, you know, 16 chapters and they need to go on for four score in seven years. But uh, I will also say, I think Rhea, if anybody in these of the, uh, you know, outside of him deserves to have one of these long dominant ones, I think Rhea should, because I would like for it to go another year and we get, Rhea versus they're kind of uh, keeping track of it undefeated at WrestleMania Bianca. And you could, you could honestly, if you wanted to, you could main event night two with that next year. If that tickled your fancy, I think that would be neat. Funny. But, you uh, met, funny. You mentioned Bianca there, Joe, because up until two weeks ago, she didn't have a match on the card. And you're like, this is a woman they have featured predominantly in the past at Manias, who's been spotless at Mania, didn't have a match, and now she's in this six-woman match, which I'm glad she is. I'm glad she made the card. But I almost feel underlying this is going to be the Jade Cargill showcase, and she's going yeah. to be protected with Naomi and Bianca. But props to WWE for handling Jade the way that they have. They haven't rushed her into the spotlight when she's clearly not ready. She's still green. And I think working here with Naomi and working with Bianca is just going to make her even better and make her even shine more uh, on Saturday night. It should be good. 
And the Jade Cargill stuff will be interesting, especially whenever they decide to actually kind of let it loose with her. Um, but yeah, you're right with the whole Bianca situation. A lot of people were thinking initially that they were going to do her versus Jade. I think thought that would have been a bad idea. Some people wa- thought that they were going to do her versus Tiffany Stratton, which I think eventually could be an awesome match. But I oh, think we love we love Tiffy time on this show. We I'm love sorry, Tiffy time. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> I know, like, no, yeah. But look, I know it's her her WrestleMania thing. It's only like three or four, maybe five. No, four, probably four and oh or whatever. But it's a thing people talk about, and that'd be like that's just something that you can just kind of naturally fall ass backwards into, where you could have a woman who's all of a sudden like, oh, you look up and it's like, oh, she's eight or nine and oh at WrestleMania. Let's make this a thing. Um, and I think someone like Bianca is probably the only person, the only woman like big enough to actually be worthy of dethroning Rhea, who's been, I mean, outside of Roman, and you could argue the artist formerly known as Walter, she's the third most popular or like biggest champion. And if you add like Cody in there, she's in the top five of most over people that want to people will tune in because of Rhea. So I think you have to have someone like a Bianca end it. Not that Becky isn't that, to go back to that point. But I think if you continue to draw it out with her, let her continue to do her thing. Um, She's just so damn popular. I don't think there's any reason to end it uh, in a few days. No, I agree. And I'm glad you you mentioned the artist formerly known as Walter because I think that's a great transition into, uh, into the Intercontinental title match. And Gunther... Uh, let me ask, let me put it to you, Rod. Uh, do you think Sami Zayn is the man to end this run that Gunther has been on? It feels like it shouldn't be, honestly. I mean, I love Sami Zayn and I love all that he's, that he's, but I mean, if you have to have coaching to get up to beat the, 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 the champion, then you probably shouldn't be the champion. You know what I'm saying? Like if you're going to need, uh, uh, a, a big montage, a big training montage to get pumped up for a championship match. I mean, this is this is the antithesis of everything that the Cody Rhodes and I mean, this is like your feel good bubble gum type of a thing, right? But I honestly, I don't think, I don't think Sami Zayn is the guy to do it. I, I think that Gunther's probably gonna take this and and prove that he deserves to be the champion for a lot longer. Because I mean, look, if it's up to me, yeah. I think he should definitely be uh, dethroned because that's a long title reign. I don't, I don't know that anybody needs to have. Maybe it's just because I came from the era where every every championship match was on the line just about every single week on every Saturday. You know what I'm saying? But uh, yeah, it, it's just I don't know. I don't feel like Sami Zayn is that guy. I know the pump, and I know that the crowd loves the the pop every time he comes out. But I mean, do you guys think Sami Zayn is the guy to take down Gunther? I I don't feel like it. I don't I feel a, like it either. I have a question for the class. <laughs> Am I the only one who thinks that the wrong guy is in this match against Gunther, aka yes, the no. artist formerly known as Walter? No, Am I the only, I one? Am I the, am I the only no. one that thinks they fucked that up? And no. I love Sami Zayn. <laughs> I love Sami Zayn too. But we know. Go ahead, Regal. Who should be in this match? I think we all are in agreement on this one. So, I do think that Gable should be the guy in this match. I think it's right there. <laughs> It was it, it they've been telling the right story there. since September. It's right there. But right. I'm gonna talk about the match that we do have for a moment, which is sure. Sammy. Sure. And here's the thing. You saw it with the Roman match, you've seen it so many times. Sammy is the ultimate Ricky Morton style baby face in peril that the crowd will get behind against Walter, who basically has been built up as an unstoppable killing machine. So I think they're going to have Sammy win here because I think Gunther is going to lose upward. Gunther is going to lose this match, and then he will go up to the next level. He is a future world heavyweight champion, in my opinion. Possibly the challenge because the crowd... He's already a quasi, even though he's a heel, he's a quasi baby face because when you build up an ass kicker like that, the crowd is going to get behind him organically. That's a good point. 
That's You're right. He almost gets that road warrior pop when he comes out. I mean, he's such a badass. He's been built up. And then, I, you know, I don't know if Sammy's the one to beat him. I, I agree that Chad Gable, it was right there. They were working, Gable and Gunther were working the house show circuit. And, and something must have not clicked with them two for this to be fe- featured at Mania. But Gable's the guy to beat him. If Sammy beats him, that's great because Gunther losing does not hurt Gunther at all. It's only no. going to move him up. And I think if you want that feel good moment, like you said, you know, Sami Zayn is that Ricky Morton type character that the crowd just sympathizes with no matter what. You're going to get that big celebration, that big feel good moment, you know, on night one at Mania. Can I throw out another theory? For sure. Hopefully it's not Austin. Gunther, <laughs> no one beats that Gunther beats Sammy at Mania, but your night after Mania moment. Gable makes the challenge. He wins the night after Mania. That'd be cool. That I'd would be sound that. legit. I'd I mean, be I'd be down that. for it, but I hate when WWE does stuff like that, where like we're gonna build up this moment at the pay per view, and then oops, it's squashed, and then either the Raw after or the next pay per view, everyone like you know they do a course reversal just to give everyone their wins back or whatever. Um, but you know, but I'll give Shorty G, you know, whatever it takes to get him the title. Uh, but my like my concern is is like when I brought up uh, the Rock earlier and like being used to elevate ta- uh, uh, talent that are just on the cusp. I feel like whoever is the one to default a throne Gunther uh, should be that person. Like Sami Zayn, like we all love Sami Zayn, but like really he's Teflon as well. Like he could take all the losses in the world and tomorrow, you know, and the next night we're going to be right back at him begging, begging for him to win. And so like, does he really gain something off this victory? Like in a substantial way. And I don't think, and I think the answer to that is ultimately no, because he's accomplished so much. Like, let's, let's give it like, I think the person that did throne Gunther should be someone again, like a Gable who really hasn't had his flowers yet or some other, again, somebody that they want, that they think could be the future is just they just need that little extra bump to get over the hump uh but that being said you know again imagine the pop if when Sami Zayn is the one to pull off this victory though i say let let uh let sammy lose keep, keep the belt on gunther to like SummerSlam and let have a have like a ultimate warrior hulk hogan battle between him, him and drew like i think i think the crowd will salivate at that one uh, me too. A, yeah, that would be that would be big time. That would be big time, especially considering that time a year ago they had the Drew versus Gunther match for the IC belt, and Gunther beat him. And then the next year, Drew's world champion, and he, you know, it's it, that would be an interesting story. Be, but yeah, if Sammy did win, I would love it again because I well listen, we all love our favorite, uh, y- you know. Um, Underground, you know, underdog from the underground. There we go. Don't make exactly. Me sing the intro. I'll sing it for you. I don't even Listen, care. Listen, <laughs> I just let's go. I just yeah. If he did win it, I would feel bad because it should have been someone else's moment. And Gable and uh, our boy AFK Walter would have been like a twelve star best match ever in the history of May WrestleMania type of thing. I know because again, they've been the only guy that's even come inches away from beating him is when he got the count out victory in like November. If, if like they were building to the moment of him being the guy to do it and they had it, it was right there. And they, they went up for the open layup and they shot it over the backboard. I can't, I can't believe and uh, Like it was, it was the one reminder of they, 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 they still have those misses in them because they've done everything for mania. Perfect. Since the whole rock and Cody fiasco and that one, it was just like, how did we miss this? But I mean, listen, it'll still be a great match regardless. It just sucks because man, Gable and Gunther could be the match. Could have been the match of the weekend. Could have been match of the year. Could have been one of the greatest matches in Mania history. And then the moment of Gable getting it and winning it and beating him and being the one to do it, it would have been special. Now I do hope what happens is kind of what you guys were talking about: is he wins it and still holds the belt when he challenges Drew. Or for the love of God, if Damian Priest ever cashes in, or if CM Punk comes back and beats Drew, then Punk can drop it to Gunther like a month later. I, I would. That's what I hope happens now, because if it's me personally, if it's not Gable, I don't want anyone else to beat him because 
or it doesn't make sense, I guess, maybe. But maybe maybe that's just me not looking at it from the right lens, which I will accept that take. I, I know Rob mentioned that he f- believes Rhea and Becky will be the low-key banger of night one. This is my vote for banger of night one. Gee, I just can't even imagine how much punishment is going to be handed out. I mean, Sami Zayn <laughs> takes an ass kicking with the best of them. And he is going to take a grade A ass kicking here on night one, win or lose. He is going to get his ass kicked, and it's going to be it's going to be glorious as for fans to watch. I mean, I love Sammy, but he is going to get his ass kicked. <laughs> I feel the chops now, and yeah. you know, <laughs> oh, they're, 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 they're like they're they're like three days away, and I, I think I think I think there's a handprint or two. I, I don't know. I just oh. I have this image in my head of Daniel Bryan and his chest from the beating he took a few years ago, that's going to be Sammy only much worse. Oh, we, what we need to do is uh, like find, uh, see if someone gets a good picture of Sammy after the match is over or like, uh, like an hour after the match is over and compare that to uh, PCO uh, when uh, he had his reconnaissance, uh, uh, not reconnaissance, uh, renaissance, where he came back and looked all tore up because of uh, Volter. I was yeah. just about to bring that one up. The the uh, Walter versus PCO match for a bit. With, I believe it was Joey Janela's Spring Break 2, where PCO's chest after facing Walter is just this black, uh, blood-bruised, insane mess. And that's what I believe Sammy's going to probably look like at the end of this match. Oh, and PCO's, uh, you know, 250 pounds. Like, he's got 40 pounds on Sammy Zayn. Like, it's... Walter's just going to chop him in half. Like, literally, he's just going to bend at the waist and snap in half. CZ, what else on night one have we not covered yet that we need to cover? The There's a couple that we haven't covered. The big one, though, is the six-person tag, six tag match or the six-team ta- ladder match that's just going to be a war. I don't know yeah, if you, I, uh, I don't know if you guys heard on Monday night, but Michael Cole was very pointed to say that the match will continue until both sets of titles have been retrieved, which leads me to believe that there's going to be a split, and the the SmackDown and Raw will have their own respective tag team titles again, which honestly I don't think is a bad thing. Considering how many no. good tag teams they have right now that are on the main roster, it probably is warranted. Wouldn't you guys agree? Absolutely. Yeah. We yeah. we've seen this little mini revival of tag team wrestling in the WWE, and obviously, we all know that uh, Vince was not a fan of tag team wrestling. Where I believe Triple H is a fan of tag team wrestling. So, the way they beat it over the head on with that on Monday Night CZ, you're absolutely correct. They're gonna flip. They're they're gonna split these belts here. Um, this is gonna be. I, I love a good spot fest. I've always loved Money in the Bank, TLC matches, anything like that. These teams, these people in this match, they're just gonna go crazy. I'm looking for like DIY to do some crazy stuff. I guarantee you, Austin Theory and Grayson Waller are probably gonna take some insane bumps. Um, I'm gonna throw out a wild card. Is there any chance there's a mystery team in this match? A seventh team. Uh, and, uh, I, I, I'm saying no. Oh, no, no. I'm saying I'm delete. About. Delete. Oh, he's saying delete. Delete. No. Regal's I'm going there here, uh, baby. Regal's Detroit calling for the Michigan. Motor City Machine Guns. Cameron's calling for the Hardys. Machine Guns. I, I can, be, I can get behind both insane. of them. I would Hardy's go insane. If they do like they did a couple years ago with the Hardys, and so have Aldis or Pierce come out, there's a added special team to this match, and out comes Alex Shelley and Chris Sabe in the Motor City Machine Guns debuting in the WWE. I think they're gonna sign with the Tony Khan Brigade. Sorry to burst that bubble, but we'll I mean that would be cool. I love the guns. It would be cool. Uh, Rod, Rod, what do you see? How do you see this tag match shaking out? You, who do you, who's your pick to win this this one? Well, I believe it's going to be a complete and utter chaos match, but um, I feel like they're going to I, they're going to at least leave uh, Priest and Baylor with a set. I, I think uh, CZ's right. 
They're going to break these up. But uh, who gets the other belts? I honestly, it, it's a toss up in this one because you can make a case for just about every single one of these guys. I do like the striker saying awesome truth is going to have the belts. I'm sorry, but both of those guys are just in there for comedic relief at this oh, point. Oh, no. One of the if if CZ is right with this theory, they're absolutely I thought they were going to win the match so? anyway, but they're winning one of the two sets of titles at the You know what? Oh, my God. The, the second light bulb moment. By the way, I had a great <clears throat> satire joke. Nick, I'm sorry, but I can't let this sit in my mind. Regal mentioned Vince McMahon not liking tag team wrestling. It's because he liked an entirely different type of tag team wrestling. Anywho, moving oh, forward. Oh, hey, oh, oh, hey, oh, 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 family uh, show. Family show. <laughs> Hi, the kids. Uh, sorry. Uh, so... <laughs> so our, our our own wizard that that's how great the four frequency sake podcast network is is that we can employ a wizard he's a literal wizard he's uh, a wizard he mentioned on that michael cole good old maggle mentioned that both tag titles have to be brought down for the match to end they also met, went out of their way the other night i saw this clip to michael went out of his way to make sure that he mentioned that our, that our good friend and yours, Ron Killings, has never won a match at WrestleMania. Our truth is definitely going to pull down only one of the sets of titles, and they're, he's going to go nuts thinking the match is over, right? <laughs> yeah, like, that's why no, we no. are 18 wheeler, full steam ahead, locomotive through the, the monster truck through the, the, the abandoned RV. We are full bore for that. And then who, who wins the other set? I've got no idea. Uh, I know who I want to see. I've got two teams that I could see coming away with the other title. Uh, one of them is just wishful thinking because of my uh, my love for Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa, but I would love to see DIY. I would love to see them win the SmackDown titles and get moved over to the blue brand, but I would also make a big case for New Catch Republic. I think they're on fire right now. Uh Bait and Dunn are just fantastic, and I can really see them coming away getting the uh, getting those t that second set of belts. Can I, I can't get behind the bruiser weights. I I don't know what it is about that style. It just makes me go. Uh, what are we watching here? DJ this just popped match me. is going to be so much fun. I'm glad it's on Saturday night. I'm glad it's on night one. Um, I said I wanted the ladies to lead off the show. If Rhea and Becky don't lead off the show, this better lead off the show. This is going to be so much fun. Uh, pray for Grayson Waller. Pray for Austin Theory. They may both die during this match. I don't see those guys walking away with the titles. They're going to take the brunt of the heavy bumps. They're going to um, take the Sin Cara bumps. Yes, yes, the Sin Cara bumps. But I think our truth just the, the his reaction and winning will be – will be worth it and i think it will 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 be worth the laugh i see our truth and miz getting one set of the belts the other set i think is up in the air i just don't think grayson waller and theory will win because they'll be no. too busy dead over in the corner but <laughs> dj's idea here trumps my theory our truth with our truth is going to pull down literally one title and end up tag champs with like grayson waller who gets the other <laughs> that would be so goddamn funny <laughs> <laughs> like I, the R Truth stuff, the R Truth stuff at times it's like heinous, but he has been on a on an immaculate heater the last couple season, couple years. Like since the twenty four title, twenty four seven title became a thing, he went from insufferable to like hil actually hilarious. And I will tell you, I don't think I've laughed at an R Truth thing so hard, other than at the Royal Rumble because Jesus Christ, that was gold. Like some a of the stuff he does is stupid. Hot tag. Hot tag at the the crowd, he got the crowd to get into the hot tag, and the commentary was it. It was so good. It was so good. Oh my gosh! Yeah, like he's yeah. such a good sport, though. I, I love that he doesn't mind being the the comedic relief in it. You know, it, it always makes it more fun when a guy's in on it and just embraces it. That's how you make the money long term. Like, yes. and, you, and, he, and he doesn't have to destroy his body. Like, he could have stinkers You're of right. matches, and no one's going to care because he's getting the hot tag in the Royal Rumble. Our truth is <laughs> a national treasure, you. and I will advocate for him to get all the belts just by himself. He is a one man tag team champion, and then he can <laughs> he can proclaim himself tag team champs with his childhood hero John Cena. He's right here. <laughs> 
Like yes. we don't, we can't, but we can't see we can't it. So it's fine. Yes. I'm, I'm telling you, Rod, 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 you're onto something there. He has done all this without really putting his body on the line. He's been a thorn in the Judgment Day side, and he's only gotten like one severe beatdown. He's done such a great job. Go to commercial. I, I think he needs to be rewarded <laughs> uh, for 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 taking the ball and running with this. In my opinion, I said forever the egg truth. Our truth is like the Hall of Fame speech. I can't wait for one day because that Hall of Fame speech is going to be absolutely epic. <laughs> Dude, that's I mean, Rod, I know you have cool. to, uh, Rod. I know you have to step out here. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, you, you're welcome back to talk wrestling anytime, my friend. Oh, I appreciate it. this. Was a lot of fun. I don't get to talk wrestling very often. I'm I'm knee deep in NASCAR and football and all kinds of other crazy stuff. So this was a lot of fun. I'm so glad that you guys invited me on. So uh, I'll, I'll do it again anytime you guys want. Rod, you're welcome. Oh. RVG, you're welcome back here anytime. R V G, Mr. Wednesday night, <laughs> Mr. Wednesday night. I like that. So, I I was gonna say, uh, there we go. I think nope, that ain't no. it. This is it right here. There we go. Um, yeah, but but oh, it yeah. cuts off people's names, so we're gonna go back to this one. Okay, that's fair. I, just, I said so. It's my show, Joe. Now it's this three. Is my show. I know. I was, rules. I was I trying to help. I, I was trying was... to help. He already changed the rules. I thought this was going to be a triple threat tag match. And then he sends me a text the other day, like, it's a scramble, bro. Swerve. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> it's a scramble, bro. That's funny. Swerve. No, like our truth. He's gonna, I hope he's gonna make this match feel like it's gonna be a mix of a serious WrestleMania match, a crazy spot fest, and with the comedic value of like those 10 man tag team matches on like the end of PWG shows where everyone's just doing dumb shit where you have like juice and juice and thunder Liger starting to like thumb in the butt train and stuff, or when they're wrestling in slow motion, like that type of stuff won't happen, but it, but it will be the perfect blend of everything. Um, sorry. I had to get a PWG stick in there. That's, that was my childhood. I love, that was my favorite, like cluster tag matches the Jushin Liger one where he's demanding the thumb up the bum <laughs> yeah or Tommaso Ciampa standing in the corner singing I believe I can fly <laughs> so good now, so now good. Rob I know you are a big fan of battle royals um is it is it a shame that the honor of the giant is battle royal is just an afterthought now they put it on smackdown on friday nights you think it should be on one of these mania nights well, that, that that was tradition before they turned it into the Andre. It used to be like the pre-show Battle Royal to get everybody a paycheck, yes. uh, WrestleMania paycheck. And so, like, I definitely think it it kind of uh, negates some of the specialness if it's just on a regular show while still calling it the Andre the Giant Battle Royal. Um, I mean, I'm glad they're still having it in general. Again, anytime you can get everybody a payday, it's great. But... Also, to be realistic, they've never made the Andre to be terribly prestigious. They've always kind of just pooped on the winner, like as soon as they won it. So, it really felt like the first few years of it, they had an idea. Like Cesaro won it in this cool way, um, and then he teamed up with Paul Heyman, and then they screwed it up because back then they screwed everything up. The next year, Bear, it wasn't the the next year Big Show won it, which we all get it. And then the year after that, it was Baron Corbin while he was like still in between being called up from NXT. So like all felt right. And then ever since then, like they just made they were just like, well, no one, I guess we, we can't book a winner. We can't book the winner of this. Right. And no, so it means no one cares about it, which means now we don't care about it. So, yeah. <laughs> Well, gentlemen, let's uh, let's take this time to take a quick time out, do our do our sponsorship gig, and pay homage to uh, other shows on the network as well as our sponsors. Here, we'll be right back. Football season may be over, but for frequency's sake, still has you covered for all your sporting needs. Tune in every Sunday when the best professional wrestling podcast around, cards subject to change, gets you caught up on everything inside the ropes. They won't miss a count with weekly analysis and interviews. More into auto racing? We've got a double dose for you on the track. Tune into Fast Money with Rod Villagomez each week and win some money with the quickest bets in all of sports. Want more insight from Pit Row? 
Check out the Green, White, and Checkered podcast where they give their insight on everything happening on and off the track. Need your basketball fix? Points in the Pain has you covered with live shows every other week looking at everything in the association. Backed by popular demand, we have the return of The Payoff Pitch, FFSQC's baseball show, covering you on news around the MLB. If you're missing football, don't fret. Mark and Dan still have you covered in the football lounge. Missing Joe Winkle? Probably not, but he's still here talking sports on Educated Ignorance. Football season might be over, but we've still got you covered. For frequency's sake, you know what we mean. For frequency's sake is brought to you by Durham Remodeling, serving the Quad City area's remodeling and repair needs since 1973. Clint's Draft House, grab a bite and a pint. 7th Street Moline. Low Pies, New York-style pizza served up by the Slice or Pie, Davenport. Lifted Energy, energy drinks, coffee, donuts, and more. Hashtag get lifted. Atomic Sports Cards and Collectibles. Sports cards and memorabilia, vintage clothing, hats, pennants, and more. Ryan Allison Tattoo. Step into the vibrant world of tattoos with Ryan <coughs> Allison. And a cut above. Offering quality custom woodwork designed specifically around our customers. Welcome back to the show. This is our card subject to change. Big panel WrestleMania preview, both night one and night two. We talked night one in the first segment. If you missed it, you're going to have to go back and catch it. You missed some great stuff on there. I am never wrong. Nick Bull joined, of course, by my tag team partner, the Wizard CZ. Uh, joining us on the panel still, Rob Kammerer from MLW Confusion Podcast. We've got Tim Regal, the play-by-play voice of SCW Pro. And from the Educated Ignorance Podcast, we've got Joe the Show Winkle. CZ, we talked night one, of course, in the first segment. Night two has the big main event, but what else is catching your eye on that night two card on Sunday? Well, let me kind of start things off by what's not catching my eye, if you don't mind. No, go. That, uh, yeah, whatever. Yeah. We have the, the Pride versus the Final Testament in a Philadelphia street fight. Now, I'll challenge any one of you to hype me up on this match, but I think I, I haven't really been invested. I don't care about the build for this match. And I'm really not invested in either of these teams going in. I'd rather drink motor oil than be invested in a carrion cross match. <laughs> um, uh, Scarlet Bordeaux at ringside. That's is that something yeah. we might be. Interested that's in? that's enough to get me there, Regal. I'm not complaining, but <laughs> CZ, that, that's apparently not enough for him. Listen, man. Some some people are. Some people want a lot of things, and some people are simplistic men. And Regal <laughs> is a simplistic man, and I appreciate that. Uh, hey, hey, everybody, uh, everybody that knows me, know, for any amount of time, knows that uh, I am a Scarlet Bordeaux fan. So uh, <laughs> I'm always going to be there for uh, that. But uh, yeah, this match, I really want to like Karrion Cross, like. When he was in when Lucha Underground and then Impact, I thought that this guy really had something. And then he got to WWE. And and those the bell rings. It's just, it's just yeah, it, literally. And then the bell has to ring, and it's just, there's just nothing there. Like the, he has everything I, that you think the pro wrestler should have, but it's just not there. It worked great when I the pandemic was running. hot when no fans were there. <laughs> and then Adam Cole absolutely eviscerated him on the mic, and he's <laughs> no one has cared about him since. Rob. I thought his run in NXT was a, was was not bad, but you're right. He's he's gotten into the WWE and the, especially on the main roster, there is just no reason for me to care about Karrion Cross, and that's unfortunate because I like him. I want to like him. I want to root for him, but they haven't given me a reason. Rob, any interest in this match at all? Can you convince CZ to watch this match? Oh, because I, I am not high on this match. Like, the only person in this match that I enjoy is Montez Ford in general. Like, he entertains me. Like, Bobby Lashley can have a good match. I'll, I'll give him that. But, like, I'm very choosy with my Bobby Lashley matches. But, like, yeah, this match doesn't do much to me because I've never been high. Like, out, uh, like except when Paul Ellering was involved, I've never been high on a a AOP. Carrying Cross like frustrates me because like he's so creative in his presentation, and then the bell rings and he's bland AF. Like sometimes he's okay if he fa if he faces someone like a lot smaller than him, but the problem is is he's like just a little bit bigger than me, 
And that's tiny in the WWE, despite the influx of indie talents over the years. Um, so yeah, like I'm not psyched for this match. So like, I'm sorry, I I'm not going to be changing CZ's mind outside of let's see how high, uh, how high Montez Ford can jump. So we all we're all in agreement that this is the piss break match, right? This is correct. Uh, yes. We're all get up and walk away and take a little take a piss and not miss anything. I feel like there's a world that exists where this is going to start night two. Oh, right? you shut your mouth. You That's shut your of. mouth right now. <laughs> what I'm worried about. Like, what you know what? I, I, Joe, I see where you're coming from there. I can what see other that match? Happen. That's what I, I, what other, I mean, you could, I guess LA Knight or the, the, the US triple threat, but I don't think you want to have Logan Paul curtain jerking. Um, so I was I would, Logan if Hall it were me. At all. <laughs> Should, if it were me booking, I'd have I'd have LA Knight and uh and AJ Styles open the show. Probably should yeah. Shouldn't a, a yeah. trio shouldn't a trio of Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits be much more cool? Right? Yes. You would think so. Sad. Yeah, can, I, can I throw a hot take out? Go ahead. Go for it. I'm I'm all I'm first team hot take, so go for it. Shouldn't the teaming of Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits, wouldn't they come off better as heels? They tried technically, didn't they? And it did not work. <laughs> That's what I thought. Yeah. I thought they were heels. They were supposed to be heels, and somehow they just turned babyface. This should have been a big deal, and it just it's kind of fallen flat. And I just, like I said, I want to like Karrion Cross, but... Karen Cross and AOP, just uh, it ain't it. Uh, like I said, I'm here for Charlotte, and that's pretty much it on this one. Can I just? I'm just gonna throw it out there. The night one card has is has way more of my interest in the night two card. Yes, outside yeah, yeah. of the main event, I would agree with you there, Regal. Totally. Like, I know Sunday's got that big main event, but like Sunday. They've got their work cut out for them, don't they? I mean, after especially after Saturday, in my opinion, just the way the, the matches are, Sunday just can we can we fast forward to the end? <laughs> That's kind of my feeling. <laughs> Seth and Drew should be good. It'll be cool to see Drew, even as a heel. It'll be nice to see Drew get the moment in front of people that he didn't get because of uh uh Caroni baloney. Um, so that'll be nice. But yeah, I agree. I'm not really Night two is going to be a bit of a drag, but isn't this the theme since they've gone to two nights? Night one, even the even the one in the performance center. Night one is body bagged. Night two, it seems. Every yeah, year. night one seemed to be better. Uh, I know night two will perform, and, and it's not completely poo poo, but it's got its work cut out for for itself, in my opinion, compared to night one. I think night one is just going to be one of the most fun nights of wrestling that we can remember. Now, oh, night, two, night two last year, altogether last year could have and should have been. Because I remember last year, night one was like one of the best five or six WrestleMania nights, period. And <laughs> night two was going to make it maybe the greatest mania since 17. Uh, but then, you know, we had rubber chicken gate. So uh, hopefully... Hopefully we don't get that this year. Well, and I guess my thought is too, I mean, not that again, like on paper, the most of the matches aren't going to be bad or anything, but there's just not a whole lot of good hype about it. Correct. But could you argue like this was by design, especially if we're looking at coronating Drew and or Cody, especially Cody at the end of it. Good point, Rob. It, Very do, good do, point. Do, do you really want it, yeah. the crowd to like be really tired when we get the overbooked mess of the main event? That's a great point. And you probably, yes. I would expect... I would expect hmm, they'll probably do a great – they'll probably try to pace it to a degree where, like, the 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 EO Bailey match is, like, the second match. The Seth-Drew match is, like, the – so what is there right now? Six, that's probably the fourth. And then in between Seth and Drew and the main event, you probably stick the six-man tag match. Um, if I had to guess, that's how they try to pace it out. Uh, because yeah, those two world title matches, um, and the the EO versus Bailey match are all going to be like very emotional, very high dramatic, you know, moments probably. I I do think the EO Bailey match is going to be fantastic. Um, this is Bailey's 
popularity is huge. It's she's probably, honestly more probably might be the most popular she's at most over she's been in her career. The the baby face turn was perfectly executed. Mm -hmm. um, EO is an absolutely amazing worker in the ring and just has that natural charisma. I think those two ladies, especially after we get the killer match on night one, they're gonna want to go. They're gonna want to go out and absolutely kill it on night two. That match could end up stealing the entire show. You I answered my is, question right there. Is that the show stealer of the night? I, yeah, I think this is gonna be the better of the two women's matches. Striker in the ch in the chat on YouTube asked, uh, "What is everyone's most anticipated match on both nights?" Low key for me, it's this one. I've always been an EO, an artist formerly known as EO Shirai fan. Um, I think this match is going to be awesome. Here's another question for the class because I'm a man of questions. Uh, it, what are the odds that uh, we get a the babyface Bailey theme song and b the inflatable used car salesman <laughs> float him a thing in a day? We're getting those right. Where, where's Byron Saxon when we need him? And doesn't it sound, <laughs> doesn't it seem like she's been growing her hair out more recently so she can put it up in a ponytail? I'm just saying, I, I would not. I kind of bring Izzy it, back too. Yeah, no shit. I kind of think and would hope that we get like full gimmick baby face Bailey on Sunday because that would it be neat. It, it it very well could happen that they could be saving that for Mania and it would get a pop in Philly for sure. Oh my God, yes, it would. Is there and, is there any chance we get, is there any chance we get Bailey wrestling in shorts? Oh my god! Please, <laughs> um, only if Batista's there. I just had to throw it out there. <laughs> we Disgusting! <laughs> Y'all are sick. The, the, the plus the plus five thousand better than not. Bailey wrestles in shorts. Hey, I just said she tried to get her to do it for years, and I thought my and I thought my Vince McMahon liked tag team wrestling joke was bad you know let me throw this out to the room I'll here we let's <laughs> step know. aside from matches for just a second we're talking about bailey possibly coming out as the hugger bailey with the inflatable tube men wrestlemania is known that, for yeah. entrances i want to hear your speculation who's going to have the entrance that just kills it this weekend regal let me start uh, with you if I had to guess, are we are oh, we oh, excluding sorry. we're excluding Cody Roman and The Rock, right? Yes. Okay. You already know though. On night one, we already know that The Rock. By the way, shout out to The Rock. He reads the tweets. Obviously, he did it with the Versace vest and glasses, but he read the tweets. He knew we all wanted the 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 early two thousands Hollywood heel theme song back, and he did it. Shout out to him. He's a maniac. But you already know, Rock. And Roman and Cody are going to have crazy entrances, and Seth is going to come out riding like a a Gucci mint like coated like horse or some shit. It's going to be so insane, and he's going to be wearing like something that makes him look like he's fifteen feet tall. I bet unicorn. Seth has the most egregious. Yes, he's going to be on a unicorn. Sorry, Regal. What do you think your best the best entrance will be of the two nights? I mean, if, if we're not counting the fact that th I cannot wait to see what they're going to do for a bloodline entrance on night one, um, Seth's entrance at some point, like you said, will be insane. Um, trying to think if there's somebody like down card who I haven't thought of that could. Um, Our boy Striker uh, has a good, uh, he has a good idea here. Yeah. He thinks Jade will have a pretty good one, which I could see that happening. Yeah, the, yeah, I could get that's behind six, that. That six woman is going to be the Jade Cargill show. So yeah, that that would probably be my pick. Would be a uh, some type of a spectacular entrance for Jade Cargill. Jade oh. Cargill is getting carried to the ring by like shirtless men oiled up with masks on, right? <laughs> so that's where the boys went. I thought they were even by there. <laughs> 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 Johnny, 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 Johnny TV sold him to WWE. Oh, just, I know, I, we need a I simulcast have, of uh, 
of uh, Dalton Castle as the boys come out with Jay and just watching him lose it. <laughs> they're gonna cut to him. They're gonna cut to him. They're gonna cut to him in the front row, a la the dude who uh, was shocked after the Undertaker lost in WrestleMania, and he's gonna be like, oh. "There is the true the, forbidden door right there." And Dalton then the crowd, Castle the crowd, on WWE TV, and then the crowd is gonna start chanting, "It's Jade Cargill and the boys." It's gonna be so good. <laughs> I know, I know Meek Mill and Lil Wayne are performing well. Will Rhea Ripley get a live performance, a live play to the ring? I don't know if the, you know, whoever sings her theme song would be available, but Rhea Ripley be my, would be my vote to, to, to have a big dramatic entrance. I'm going to guess on night two, we're getting downstate playing uh, their live to play Cody out. Okay. That'll be cool. Uh, I don't know. I hope not because they kind of sound like shit live. <laughs> just let it be normal and let the crowd take over. the The yeah. crowd singing is so much better because the because the crowd like know the words to the song now. It'll be great. Don't let them come play live because when they did it in AEW, it sounded like shit. Sorry, <laughs> just gonna be honest. Um, oh. actually, like as much as we kind of trashed him before, if a Karrion Cross actually has free reign over his entrance, I could see him pulling out something like interesting too because like that that's for me always been like his thing is like he does all this creative stuff to like before the match getting to the match so like now he has a wrestlemania budget and he's a triple h guy like he could probably take over his triple h's successor for like weird stupid like entrances that don't actually make sense with the match but whatever we're gonna do it anyway sure, do it. sure let's let's bring out the terminators i don't know why not he's, hey okay he's gonna come out, he's gonna come out. He's going to come out on a motorcycle riding a motorcycle. <laughs> he's going to be carried. He's going to be carried to the ring like with a giant like raven while while uh, Scarlet like, yes. rolls a rat rolls while Scarlet, down, down while the Scarlet ramp. Bordeaux is lip syncing. He's going to be carried yeah. by a raven. He's doing somersaults down the 800 foot ramp as <laughs> as he's being flown in by a giant raven. Uh, Does if, anybody if do a Bray Wyatt a... tribute entrance? Ooh. Jay Uso could have that big entrance too. Um, I bet he gets if anybody gets, gets played by an artist. I bet Lil Wayne does a freestyle over uh, Jay Uso's song. I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. Can uh, I, uh, I was gonna. Can I just I was say, gonna say I would love. I would. I would absolutely love, and this is maybe a hot take, and I don't have anything envisioned for it, but I'd love to see some kind of fantastic entrance from one L A Knight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure, but no, uh, yeah, I agree. Uh, I mean, I imagine Logan Paul too is going to have something like weird. I yeah, too. Like, he's going right. to have an eight hundred foot, 800, like he's going to have like the largest inflatable bottle of Prime we've ever seen, or something. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to they're going to hologram a la like Bray Wyatt's worms, but they're just going to uh, hologram, they're gonna hologram the, Prime the, bottles. No, they're going to hologram like his uh, Pikachu Pokemon card on the center of the ring with and he, as he's being led to the ring with giant. Prime bottles. <laughs> no, stop! It's Randy Orton's going for the RKO. He's doing the thing, and the lights go out, and the hologram comes up, and it's just people drinking Prime. Like, <laughs> Randy Orton oh, RKO's every Prime bottle imaginable. That <laughs> it, it, it's oh like in old, one of those old arcade games. They're fighting holograms, or it's like one hit, and it just disappears. Just Randy, just like pops up, R RKO a hologram, it just disappears. <laughs> Kips up Jesus another Christ. another one. The sad no. thing is we're joking, but it's WWE, so it could actually happen. It would be so funny. Actually happen. It'd be so great. Oh my gosh. That would be I hope I have as much fun on both nights of mania as I'm having right now because I hope all this stuff that we predicted comes true. <laughs> I was gonna say something logical for him, like he'll get airdropped from like a helicopter or something. Logan Paul, but yeah, Rob coming in off the top rope, Macho Man style with the the inflatable prime, and that was yeah, that was fantastic. See? And yet, I didn't get hired when I applied to the WWE as uh, as a writer. Didn't but last year shame like, on them. Wasn't KSI out there in a prime mascot outfit? Yeah. So yeah, so someone is going to yeah. be in the prime mascot outfit that's, and they're going to take a stunner into an RKO like that's yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, Randy Orton will RKO Prime Bottle. That is the thing that will happen. <laughs> I, like, I what, 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 uh, our gambling guy left. What, what were the Vegas odds on that happening? On that one. Just checked. Minus 250. <laughs> <laughs> just just checked Joe Duel and Wink King's network. Uh, yeah, my, those, are minus two, those are minus, got, minus 250 got, on both. We've got AJ Styles, LA Knight. We've got the six per, a six person street fight. We've got EO and Bailey. What are we miss? What else are we missing on night two? Let's not the, overstate the how AJ US Styles title. is yoked. By the way, uh, that man is on. My man is eating his we, a a well balanced breakfast. Shout out to AJ Styles. He almost looks when, like Zach Efron when. on the Iron Claw. He's he's getting to that status. Maybe that's who trained him. Hey, listen, yeah. maybe maybe Wendy is just bringing him breakfast in bed every morning. Maybe. And, you know, shout out to Wendy. Wendy. <laughs> I was hoping someone was going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Throwback to the, uh, the real final boss, Samoa Joe, and his time in the WWE. Goated. Goated. Yeah, no, night. that's... <laughs> I, I no, I think for night one or night two, they'll have a lot to they'll have a lot to back up. But listen, last year night two in comparison to night one was a bit was a bit low. But then I'm but granted, I guess they did have it more evened out in a sense because last year on night two, you did have Oscar versus Bianca, which granted that match was a bit weird, and they've never had a good match against with each other, which is weird. Um. You did have the Sheamus, Drew, and AFK Walter triple threat, which was in- incredible. Instant and then, classic. of course, and then of course you had, uh, you had the uh, the main event, which was great until a rubber duck got involved, a rubber chicken got involved. Um, so listen, night two could be pretty good because it'll have more like moments of you know triumph in a sense. But I think night one's gonna be like we're gonna get to to the we're gonna get to the old you know Neverland Ranch out there or whatever you call your your house nowadays, Nick. Uh, <laughs> Hide you loud, and and uh, and we are going to feel like we are hooked up to to adrenaline for for three hours. Yeah, it, yeah. it will be batshit crazy, especially if that six that six tag match or whatever starts the show. We will be on from the from the moment the jump starts. The, 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 here's how here's kind of how i look at it yep night one is the the in your face everything you want to see night night two is the we're gonna stir some emotions out of your night in my opinion that's a fair speaking that's of a fair emotion, assessment speaking of emotion i'm gonna throw one more wild card theory to you guys all right, all right. picture if you will Main event, Cody wins. Crowd is going bananas. Cody gets up. He's celebrating. The referee goes to hand him the Universal Championship. And just before it gets to his hands, bam! Money in the bank briefcase to the back of the head. Cody and Priest cashes in. Ew. Wins the world title. Cody never touches the title. Damian Priest pulls off the crime of the century. <laughs> and Cody finished one story, but now we have another one. I would need a bath. I need a <laughs> bath right now. <laughs> you would need a bath after uh, uh, PB went choppy choppy. <laughs> I mean, at least he would have pinned Roman, but ugh, I, I'm gonna go shower after this now, like twice, um, back to back. I will only one in my your, upstairs one and one in my downstairs one, just because that just sounds gross. I'm glad we only accept that. this I, I'm, if I'm there are two rubber chickens thrown in the ring. <laughs> yes, so there will be multiple. So here, no, if that happened, every everyone would be chucking a rubber chicken. Um, but I'm glad Regal brought up the the, the possible cash in because everybody believes. Oh, he could cash in on Drew, but no one's even really thought if he could ca- if he cashed in on on Cody. 
or well, well, I mean, uh, wouldn't it be like a great irony if he cashes in in the middle of the Seth Drew match, just like Seth did at WrestleMania? Oh, so I yeah. I don't know if I spilled this to you guys, but as I spilled this to a friend forever. When they were gonna do Seth versus CM Punk, my thought process was. We are doing this to give CM Punk his main event moment, which is great. Um, which now is ironic because if everything happened the way it happened, we probably don't get the, uh, you know, and, you know, he doesn't have a main event or the rock stuff never happens. Anywho, uh, he gets his main event moment. It would have felt like the perfect time to shoe in the cash in be either in the match as a cool little, hey, here's a little thing, you know, like you said it's a little ironic that it happened to Seth in the middle of a match like he did it or CM Punk beats Seth. And then the next night he loses it to Damian Priest because CM Punk doesn't care about putting people over. He doesn't care. And he would want to do it. It would make sense. Blah, blah, blah. Um, But since Punk got hurt, like we're closing in on the allotted time for the money in the bank contract. Uh, I'm, I'm going to act like CM Punk and we'll act like I'm looking at a fake watch. But I'm not gonna say it's clobbering time. I'm say, I'm gonna say it's it's we're running out of time. Uh, I don't know what we're gonna do with the with the briefcase, but because uh, we're on borrowed time, you know, for lack of yeah. better terms, with how much uh, runway we have to try to land this. Um. So yeah, the more and more the more days that go on, the more it seems like they really goofed up by not having. Finn win at SummerSlam so Damien could cash in to beat him and then but I don't know whatever no you're you're absolutely right we're running out of time for uh <clears throat> for Priest to cash in and you gotta wonder as we get closer and closer if he doesn't cash in this weekend is he gonna cash in and fail at this point you would think right like yeah it would be cool if he cashed in on Sunday for the for the sake of like, you know, hey, just like Seth had it, he won it, you know, he loses it in this way. But I feel like you at this point, anything that doesn't end in Drew McIntyre winning that that match on Sunday night will feel like a waste, especially with all the shit he's doing with with Punk. And like they had that segment not on this Raw last week, this week, but the one last week uh, when in Chicago. If Drew if Drew doesn't win that match on Sunday, then that would be uh, very odd. I agree. I agree. Night two will have its moments. The cash in looms large. All looms large over the Seth and Drew match. Also, it can loom large over the main event. We talked earlier in the show how the main event is going to be an absolute circus, a circus, a three-ring circus, a circus that we're all going to be tuned in for with our popcorn. I've heard the, the, the comparison online, the Avengers are going to assemble. Are we going to see the likes of Stone Cold, John Cena? Do we see a Diamond Dallas Page? Will AEW loan out Dustin Rhodes in case Cody does win for the celebration? That's one thing I've kind of thought about. Will Dustin be present if Cody wins? I thought about that too because I thought about that he was going to give someone said that he's going to probably give the belt to his mom there at ringside. It would be really cool if Dustin was there too, you know? I agree. Like, yeah. um, like TK TK allowed Billy Gunn to go to the Hall of Fame last year or whatever. I would really hope that he would allow Dustin to be there for it. That would be I I I hope we see that. Well, we got the final boss. Is there any chance we see the, uh, as she would call herself, the final? And I'm not going to say that last part, but uh, does Brandy do a run in on this match? If oh. if there's ever a time for a Brandy I appearance, it's got to be WrestleMania, right? Why has Brandy not cut a promo on The Rock yet? Come on now. <laughs> I, I I keep waiting. The you're the final boss. I'm the final bitch. Is literally the ultimate. Like th that's the perfect Brandy promo. <laughs> she's definitely gonna kick with the rock in the nuts this weekend right <laughs> that, that needs to happen it would be cool it'd be well, neat i'd pop for it as we uh, as we wind down our panel show here let's go around the room and get final thoughts from everybody uh, rob i'm gonna start with you final thoughts on wrestlemania this weekend what you're looking forward to 
to what you're expecting? I mean, as, as we put it, like night one from bell to bell is probably going to be absolutely amazing. Like where we've got the combination of car crashes to the spectacles to, uh, to what could be five star matches or, you know, seven or eight or nine, if we're in the dome and AEW or New Japan or whatever. Um, but and like night and night two is going to hit us, try to hit us in the fields because we got uh, like Drew McIntyre is, li- is likely winning. We have the culmination of Bailey versus Damage Control, and then of course the main event. And despite some of my mis- misgivings and just how bored I am in general with the whole Bloodline thing, like I am going to sit there with bated breath to see how it goes because one way or another things are going to explode after that main event, whether it's. Uh, you know whether Cody finishes his story or we have you know worst case scenario and Roman's reign continues which will also be great just because I want to watch the internet burn uh in the process <laughs> you, <of it. laughs> you know um you'd have to you know, peel but... me off the floor of Nick's garage I would be like <laughs> what on earth if but Roman the, wins the, the, the... If Roman wins, somebody better be rolling a camera at low pies because the reaction from me is going to be worth it. <sighs> nuts, but like, yeah, I, I, I just, I, you know, you know, age of the chaos. I like watching things burn. But like overall, like I do want to see the, how that match will turn up because we all agree it's also going to be a car crash because you know every single member of the bloodline is going to interfere. There's rumored new members of the bloodline like hiding in the shadows that we've never gotten confirmation officially speaking whether those are true or not. You know, will we have ghosts of Roman's past come to cut him off? You know, we still have, you know, Jay Uso running around as a Maverick Oose with uh, an axe to grind. Like, so. Maverick like... Oose. It's like a top, it sounds like a Top Gun name. Will, o- Will Offa and Sika take a bump on WrestleMania Night 2? Well, Offa is definitely not. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, who are you the, know, say, who are the two guys that gave him the lay a couple years ago? Anywho, my bad. But uh, I just say Offa's been sick lately, so you know, I don't think he's doing much. But yeah, but like, regardless of what happens in that main event, like, it's pro, like, the spectacle of it all is going to be the epitome of what WrestleMania is. Regal, I'm going to turn it to you. Final thoughts on uh, on this weekend coming up. Well, I mean, obviously, I'm all I'm already deep into the Mania weekend of Mania. There's already some shows. Um, this is honestly the most hyped up I've been for a WWE WrestleMania part of WrestleMania in probably three or four years, probably since be- since before COVID. Um, and I think it's been built great. And like like everybody says, it's WrestleMania is WrestleMania, man. It's a spectacle. It's a, you know, I always say, even for the hard, most hardcore jaded fan like myself, I try to, you know, take the smart out for a few hours and just try to enjoy the ride. And I think they've done a great job where they're going to put us in that mindset this year. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to this card. I think there's a lot of potential here and really excited to see what uh, this, uh, the new guard is going to pull out on this mania. Absolutely. Joe. Yeah. To his, to Regal's point, like this is the most I've been really excited for a WrestleMania weekend in a while. I think the only thing, the last, I mean, I'm usually, it always comes around and you get the itch and you're ready. Last year, I wasn't really feeling it. Um, the year before that, um, you know, 30, what though, that was the one in Texas. I was excited because we all kind of knew that, Cody was probably going to show up for the Seth match and that happened. And that was really cool. Um, and you have some like underrated gems on that one. Like the Johnny Knoxville, Sami Zayn thing was actually funny and it worked. <laughs> the stone cold Kevin Owens thing somehow worked. Um, but like, yeah, since I mean, WrestleMania 35, I remember I was geeked for that one. That's the one that had Kofi and Becky and Seth all winning. Uh, but since then, you know, we obviously had the the, the old pan, the old Demi, so, so that 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 kind of put a damper on a lot of stuff. But I'm excited for it. And considering eight weeks ago, I was thinking I would be insanely disinterested because it felt like they were making every wrong turn. Uh, they have some which they find a way to do. They have course corrected, and uh, for you know whether it was planned or not, and that's the, the unknown question that we'll always have. 
But honestly, who cares? Because it should be exciting. It's gonna be. It's gonna be. It's gonna be a thrill. Uh, shout out to the product. Shout out to to old VKM being gone because you don't have to have these. Uh, you know, we don't have to have any crazy gimmick this year, like the most stupendous two night extravaganza or whatever. Um, it's just WrestleMania. So, you know, it feels it'll be cool. I will be excited to see like a little thing for me. I like how the presentation of it. I feel like since old K, K Dunn left presentation is at a level that it's never been at in the E. And I am ecstatic to see what it looks like, what the per- like what Monday night's Raw's production, which usually is pretty darn good now, um, what that will look like on a WrestleMania stage, since old uh, old Bucktooth isn't there anymore. I'm excited for that. I'm just excited for the whole weekend to hang out at with our with our, with our good friends and and you know enjoy life together. It should be a doozy. Uh, th- this was fun, and uh, this weekend should be just as fun. And who knows? Sunday we're either all going to be excited and crying. Or we're all going to be crying because we're going to be pulling our eyes out. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Nick, what are, <laughs> Nick, what are your final thoughts, my friend? You know, I really enjoyed last year's WrestleMania. Uh, Closet's probably one of my all-time favorites. I just loved how everything flowed last year. And I think this Mania has the the, the possibility to to blow that out of the water. Um, night one is going to be a roller coaster. Night two is going to be all about the motion and, 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 and the storylines and – I think it's a perfect balance. I really do. You can't, you can't have a night one both nights, or you know, uh, and I, I just can't wait to unplug for you know four hours Saturday night, four hours Sunday night, and and just hang out with friends and enjoy. I mean, it is the most wonderful time of the year if you're a wrestling fan. Uh, we had Regal on for the independent, you know, shows. I'm, I'm kicking off my WrestleMania weekend tomorrow afternoon watching Bloodsport. Uh, getting yep. off work early and going to go watch that. And I'm excited for that. And I'm just excited for all the shows. I'm excited for the unknown. We all look forward to the unknown. The We all want to get popped. And at some point this weekend, we will. And we'll all enjoy it. And I, I, I think when we, you know, reconvene and, and, and talk about this show afterward, we'll be talking about 40 as one of the all-time greats. I think you're right. I mean, for me, the last two years since since the hype for – Cody's return at 38 all the way up until now, things have just been on a roll and getting better and better as it goes on. Uh, I'm excited. I'm just excited. You know, like, like Nick said, spending time with our friends, watching some good wrestling and just, just coasting and enjoying the ride. That's what I'm looking forward to. And that being said, that's going to put a wrap on our panel show. I want to thank everybody. We've seen some big numbers on our, on our viewership here. Uh, thank you all for tuning in live. Uh, do us a do us a favor if you're tuning in on X right now, go over to our YouTube page at CSTC Podcast. Check out our archives. Give us a like, share, and subscribe. Uh, we would love you for that. Also, you can find us on Facebook, Card Subject to Change Podcast, Instagram at CSTC Podcast. For our expert panels, Rob Camerer, Joe the Show Winkle, Tim Regal. And my my co- my tag team partner, Mister Never Wrong Nick Bull. I am and, the Wizards. And R V G Rod Villa Gomez. R V G. Thank you, Nick. I knew I'm. I meant to mention his name, and I forgot. I appreciate you getting the hot tag there. <laughs> <laughs> Tune in, everyone, on Saturday night post WrestleMania. We will do our night one reaction show immediately following. And then you can catch us next Tuesday for our night two and raw after mania reaction show. And then we get back on schedule. We've got a big month of April coming up. So stay tuned on socials for what we've got coming your way again. Thank you everyone for tuning in. Thank you to our expert panel for joining us tonight. This has been card subject to change powered by low Pice pizza built by Durham remodeling colored by Ryan Allison tattoo and now protected by Jared Zook, Country Financial. We will see you next time right here on Card Subject to Change.